It should have been just another NASA briefing, a clean, polished live stream meant to illuminate the world about an object that has traveled farther than any comet has a right to. But on November 19th, something felt off from the very first minute. Something in the air behind the carefully chosen words and the deliberate tone of calm reassurance. You could feel it in the gaps between sentences, like the speakers were holding back against a pressure we weren't supposed to notice. They talked, yes, about missions, instruments, calibration, procedural delays. But what lingered wasn't what they told us. It was what they didn't. Because when a visitor like three IATLAs drifts in from beyond the solar system, older than our sun, carrying a chemical fingerprint that doesn't match anything familiar, you don't expect a slideshow of blurry images and a repeated insistence that everything is fine. You expect clarity. You expect detail. Instead, we were given hesitation wrapped in scientific vocabulary, disclaimers that came too quickly, and reassurances that felt strangely prehearsed. And when the live stream ended, the silence that followed landed heavier than the event itself, like a weight sitting just off camera, waiting to be noticed. What did NASA see that never made it into the broadcast? Why did 20 spacecraft capture data that somehow wasn't ready to show? And why did the most unusual details, ancient origins, strange chemical ratios, unexplained forces, appear only as momentary flashes before being buried under safe, familiar words? Today, we're going into the gaps, into the pauses, into the parts of the story NASA didn't put in the live stream. From the very beginning of the event, NASA's tone felt strangely careful, like someone walking across thin ice, measuring every step before taking it. They opened by denying rumors instead of revealing new data, repeating the same comforting line again and again. Three IATLAs is just a comet. But the insistence itself felt unusual, almost like a shield held up before the real conversation even began. They listed all the tools involved, Hubble, Webb, Lucy, Psyche, Maven, MRO, almost 20 spacecraft across multiple wavelengths, each one supposedly watching this interstellar visitor. But the images they chose to show were faint, distant, cropped so tightly that they revealed almost nothing. And they supported these absent visuals with reasons, long looping reasons. Instruments out of position, calibrations incomplete, angles not ideal, data still being processed. A gentle wall of justification designed to sound reasonable, but oddly repetitive. It felt less like a scientific update and more like a script. Carefully written, carefully delivered, carefully avoiding the one thing the public had tuned in to see. The raw truth of what 3i ATLAs really looks like. What we got instead was a soft drift around the essential details, leaving behind a lingering sense that the real story lived somewhere just outside the frame. When almost 20 spacecraft observe a single object, you expect an avalanche of images. High-resolution comas, spectrographs, multi-angle comparisons. Instead, NASA mentioned each instrument like items on a checklist while offering almost no visuals to support the claims. Hubble saw a faint coma. Webb detected molecular signatures. Maven traced hydrogen. Lucy, Psyche, and MRO captured glimpses from afar. But all that the live stream delivered amounted to a handful of dim frames and distant streaks that revealed nothing new. And every mention of those missing images came wrapped in caution, as if preparing the public not for revelation but for disappointment. Instruments pushed to their limits. Observations not ideal. Data not fully downlinked. It began to sound like an explanation woven not from limitations but from selective restraint. Because the greatest mystery wasn't the object itself. It was the silence around the mountain of data NASA claimed to possess. A silence so consistent that it began to feel intentional. For a brief moment, just a single passing moment, NASA acknowledged chemical anomalies that should have commanded the spotlight. Carbon dioxide levels far higher than expected. Nickel disproportionately elevated compared to iron. Dust polarization almost never seen in local comets. Each one of these details hints at a deep, ancient, and possibly exotic origin story, the kind of discovery that could redefine what we think we know about interstellar bodies. But instead of exploring these anomalies, NASA floated past them like someone skipping over a dangerous step in the dark. No charts, no graphics, no follow-ups, just a quiet pivot back to familiar, safe language. Comets behave like this. Comets release dust like that. The contrast was jarring. They were describing properties that almost no comet shares while insisting it behaves like every other comet. And with every unspoken implication, the silence grew louder. One of the most jaw-dropping details of the entire briefing was spoken softly, quickly, and almost apologetically. Three IATLAs may originate from a star system older than the Sun itself. This alone should have triggered an avalanche of questions, implications, and analysis. 
A visitor shaped in a place older than the solar system carries stories embedded in chemistry, structure, and trajectory. Stories that could offer clues to cosmic history beyond our reach. Yet NASA did not stay with this idea. They acknowledged it, paused for a fraction of a second, and then drifted away as though lingering on it would risk opening a door they weren't ready to walk through. It was a moment so fleeting that many viewers missed it entirely, buried under layers of cautious phrasing and quick transitions back to normal. But if the object's home system predates the sun, then its secrets do too. And ignoring that is a silence louder than any data gap. Another detail slipped quickly through NASA's fingers, subtle non-gravitational forces acting on three IATLAs. A comet can experience these from outgassing, but every comet behaves differently, and these variations themselves reveal structure, rotation, composition, and thermal dynamics. What NASA offered was a soft, almost dismissive statement, as if the forces acting on three IATLAs were so normal they barely deserved attention. Yet the live stream's own tone betrayed this confidence. Because if the data were typical, why avoid showing it? Why mention forces without contextualizing them? Why speak of calibration needs as if the mere act of looking too closely might spark unwanted conclusions? When an object from another star system moves under forces we can't fully model, that's not routine. That's revelation. But NASA's treatment of it felt like someone dimming a spotlight before anyone could see what was underneath. NASA made it clear that nearly 20 missions captured visual, spectral, and thermal data of three IATLAs, but the live stream chose a handful of the least revealing frames possible. Two blurry shots here, a faint haze there, almost as if the goal wasn't illumination but containment. They claimed that some spacecraft faced glare, awkward angles, saturation issues, calibration trouble. But all those disclaimers stacked together began to form a strange pattern, one that felt less like scientific caution and more like a curtain placed gently between the public and the truth. If the images were unremarkable, they would have shown them. If they were confusing, they would have explained them. The only scenario where silence makes sense is the one where the visuals tell a story they aren't ready to share. And a story that powerful doesn't hide because it's boring, it hides because it's disruptive. As the briefing neared its final moments, the pattern became unmistakable. Questions about shape were softened. Questions about internal structure dissolved into uncertainty. Questions about unusual dust behavior were redirected. Questions about gaps in data were padded with vague promises of future analysis. Every time a question drifted too close to the unknown, the answers dissolved into caution, as if acknowledging the strangeness too openly might fracture the narrative they were trying to maintain. Too early to know, still being analyzed. Not yet calibrated, but the object is moving away and the hesitation didn't sound like the pace of science. It sounded like the pace of message management, a deliberate narrowing of the frame, a gentle redirection of the collective gaze, a silence shaped like strategy. When the live stream finally ended, what stayed wasn't the explanations. It was the empty spaces around them, the quiet places where details should have lived, the gaps where images should have appeared, the evasions where clarity should have been offered. NASA spoke, yes, but the silence spoke louder. Because when something arrives from interstellar space, older than the sun, chemically unusual, behaviorally distinct, you don't expect so much effort spent smoothing the edges of the narrative. The silence hinted at uncertainty, caution, or maybe something deeper, the possibility that the full picture doesn't fit cleanly into the categories we're used to. Maybe they're still analyzing. Maybe they're overwhelmed. Or maybe the truth is simply not ready for the world to see yet. But whatever the reason, one thing became clear. The real story of three IATLAs isn't in the live stream. It's in the shadows cast by everything NASA chose not to show. As NASA's November 19th live stream faded into silence, what stayed behind was not certainty, but a kind of gravitational tension, the unmistakable pull of a story that wasn't fully told.